God damn it. What the fuck? Right, so. Traffic, it wasn't even five huh? I told you you'd be back in time. I get the whole gang here today. And we just came back from the junkyard getting some more BMW parts, because that's BMW ownership in a nutshell. But I just got this thing in from Copart. It's a 2000 Chevy Malibu, which, you know, really isn't typically something I'd look to buy at auction. Uh, however, with the Saturn over here, which still needs some work, I got to reflash the computer to reset the throttle. And uh, now the fuel tank started leaking, which is a very common, you know, this era GM problem. The, um, the actual, there's a little plastic hose that runs off the fuel pump assembly that cracks. So you actually have to drop the whole tank and change the whole fuel pump, as for fuel pump assembly. So kind of a pain in the neck. I just wanted something that, you know, hopefully would be issue free, quick flip, maybe not much profit, but just something for this week because the auction sucked otherwise this week. All the local Copart locations to me here in Miami had nothing good and the price went way too high as they will for the next few weeks because of tax returns. Everybody's overpaying for shit. So this is one of those cars that nobody was interested in. I got it for the minimum bid, which was 250. And then when you tack on all the fees, which everybody knows that Copart are pretty excessive. Um, I don't have to use a broker because I have a dealer's license. So. Uh, guys that use brokers really get screwed hard, but I don't have to pay any of that. So so my grand total in this car is somewhere around $500. That's everything. So anyway, I haven't heard it run yet. Uh, it's supposed to be a run and drive car, but when I looked at it at the auction lot prior to bidding on it, the battery was dead, which, you know, lately I don't do that anymore. I don't buy cars that I don't hear run after the Lexus, the GS300. However, this is an AT&T car and a buddy of mine buys a lot of their vans from Copart and they never have any issues at all. So we know they maintain their stuff in-house. Why is he barking? So anyway, I'll just show you guys around the car quick and then we'll hook up some jump leads to it. Hopefully it'll start right up and run healthy. These Malibus had their share of minor issues, but it's an older vehicle. So it's not like the Saturn here, which has a million electrical gremlins and all that kind of crap. So I'm hoping this is just like the AT&T fans are just retiring and taking off the road and it's been well maintained there's something wrong with it. That's what I'm hoping. One plus it does have is it has four new tires, which is great. They'll be good for resale. It's a very clean car. It's a white car, so there's no paint issues. Besides, you can see what they spray painted over the AT&T logo because they were too lazy to peel it off over at Copart. But, and again, here you go. Bell South is back before it was, uh, AT&T only the name. So pretty clean car overall. I don't think it's gonna bring me a ton of money, but I can probably double my money, sell it for a grand real quick or 1200 bucks. Although it is tax return season, so maybe even as high as 1500. So we'll see. I have a lot of people wanna buy the Saturn right now, but I just can't sell it with the leaking fuel tank. So this was kind of just to get something in its place until I get it sorted out. But I can take care of this overspray here, no problem. Take the sticker off, obviously, but 168,000 miles. Again, four new Bridgestone tires. That I like a lot. They're, those are worth probably about what I paid for the car. I'm gonna go ahead and have them help me push this thing back out and we'll hook up some jumper cables and see if it starts. All right, so I've got the TI hooked up to the Malibu here. Uh, the jump leads over on the battery. Batteries are 2016. Hopefully it'll still be good after the car is driven. I'm sure it's been sitting. Let's see is picked up in November. So yeah, it's, it's been sitting for a bit. So hopefully this battery will be good. I will have to change it. If I do, I get them at the junkyard for 20 bucks. So it's not a big deal. But on this car, it's low profit margin because of what it is. So every penny I save counts. So we've got a door chime. Remember, I haven't heard this car run. It was said to run and drive with no mechanical issues, but this is Copart we're talking about. So that usually doesn't mean anything. Oh, it needs another minute. I just hooked it up right now, so. The miles are 168, as it said. Okay, we'll give it another minute and we'll try it again. Okay, I think she's gonna start. Oops. Oh, so close. I think it's stone cold dead. 
Okay, so I put the Escalade battery in. If it doesn't start with this, you don't have a bigger problem. I had my leads on that battery for a good few minutes with nothing. So, again, hoping this is a healthy car. Otherwise, I got a big problem. So far, so good. No check engine light. I hope that's, oh, airbag light went off. That's healthy. That's just carbon knock. It's not a knock knock. No thing. That might be a pulley. I'm going to let it warm up and I'll rev it. And if that's a knock, then I'm out some money. That's quieting down. Might just turn, might just turn piston slap. Because now it's not doing it. It's not doing it at all. It's already quiet. Though. Generally when I've bought the full-size GM trucks, they'll do a piston slap like that when they're cold. And as soon as the oil travels up, they don't do it. So it could be just if you need heavier oil. Yeah, five W thirty. Yeah. I probably I put ten W in it. But I don't again I don't hear it now. Yeah, no, I think we I think we need to start here a little Let's see if the AC works. Let's see if the other thing gives me any value in this car. That's just all dust blowing out. Oh, let's see, it's, it's lukewarm right now. I don't think it does. No, it's getting cold. Oh yeah, shit, it does work. Okay, that's good. You, I've never seen an AT&T car, it doesn't work. They don't want their employees dying of, you know, heat stroke. Yeah, no, it's working. And it's warming up now, so that it shouldn't make any more noise. All right, good, so the AC works. We're getting somewhere. I think it might have just been piston slap because a knock yeah. is usually a lot louder. You know what I mean? It's knock, 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 and knock. And it would still be going on. Yeah, you, it's, well, you're right. Engines will knock even worse when they're warm. Exactly. I ain't knocking. We're good. All right, well, let's take it for a quick spin around the block and see how it is. All right, so we're out driving the Malibu, and as I expected with this AT&T car, everything checks out. It fired right up, it ran great, AC works nice and cold, steering's tight, and uh, Alex in the back seat here noticed that the front struts have been replaced. I'm assuming the rears have as well. This might have the little rear, just the shocks, without the strut. But uh, this car feels fantastic. Everything is, it feels like a brand new car, doesn't it? It does drive super well and especially for a car that's been sitting that long so obviously because of that I want to get some new fluids in this thing but it feels good I I you know took a gamble on this not hearing it run especially after some previous buys that have uh, not been so hot not hearing them run the GS 300 for example but this seems to check out just like I hoped it would the only thing I'm gonna have to get if it doesn't charge up overnight on a deep cycle charge is a new battery but again I get those at the junkyard for 20 bucks so, $20 battery. I'll do an oil change because I hate selling cars with dirty oil. And again, uh, we don't know how old the oil is in this car. The tag is from 2016 on it, so it probably hasn't been driven much since then. But I'll change the oil, which again, that costs me over 20 bucks. So I'll be in this car all said and done around $600 with the oil change, the battery, the fees, delivery, everything, purchase price. And you know, I'm probably gonna list it for 1500. Expect someone to come offer me a grand. And I'll probably take, you know, if they got cash in hand, I'd take a grand, a quick four hundred bucks. But ideally, my aim is around twelve to thirteen hundred on it. And at the end of the day, it's two thousand Malibu. Not many people want this car, but I think uh, right now, with tax returns being out, it's going to be a quick sell. So what we'll do later on is we'll clean this thing up, see how it looks. As I, I love to do the before and after shot, see how it looks when the dust cleans up off of it, and we'll clean the inside as well. But uh, for now, I'm just relieved to see that it runs. I'm gonna I'm probably have to, just to move my Escalade out of the street, I probably should've done that before, um, take this battery out again, put it in the Escalade to move, and then put it back in this, just for tonight, so I can get this thing cleaned up. And then I'll have to get a battery for it tomorrow. But so far, very happy. All right, so here is the Malibu all cleaned up. I didn't bother filming it because the car just needed to be really hit with the power washer hard. There was a lot of that like black spotting mold shit from the car sitting for so long. But it wasn't as dramatic as some of my other cleanups, but definitely looks a hell of a lot better, I can tell you that. Uh, most of that black grimy shit came off. 
I took off the reflective tape in the back here. There's still some goo needs to be taken off, but I kind of like to leave that actually because it shows that it truly was an AT&T fleet car, as well as some other little cues. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't mind a little bit of character. Again, if I was good at this car for myself, that'd be all the proof I needed that it was a fleet car and that because of that was most likely well maintained. So the car cleaned up great. It's running fantastic still. I did the oil change last night because according to the tag at least, this hasn't been on the road since 2016. So I wanted to make sure it had fresh oil in it. The inside cleaned up real nice too. AC's ice cold. So this was a great example of a, a cheap pickup from Copart that unlike most of the cars from Copart was just ready to go. Fleet maintained cars. What are you doing back there? What are you doing? Fleet maintained cars are an excellent choice from an auction like Copart where most of the cars getting dumped in have problems because they're either dealerships dumping stuff they can't sell or fix or people who donated the cars because they have too many issues and again i get a lot of cars from copart that were donated by somebody elderly because those are the kind of cars that i like buicks cadillacs older mercedes bmws so those cars usually are in pretty good shape just some minor expected issues but a lot of cars that get donated or just put through the auction by dealers are cars with a lot of issues they can't get rid of so they drop them off at copart and again Copart's always very vague on condition. They'll say, yeah, it runs and drives, but usually they run and drive very badly, kind of like the GS300. But this car right here, being that it was fleet maintained, I safely assumed that it would be a good runner. Again, this car was $250 with fees and everything else came out closer to 500, but I'd say it's a hell of a $500 car. It's got four brand new tires. It came with new struts. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier in the video. This thing already had all the struts replaced. A lot of the steering components have been replaced. The AC is freezing. I can't say that enough because usually cars from the auction do not have working AC. So very happy with this car. Um, if I needed a car like this, I'd probably keep it because I know this thing is going to be reliable, but I don't. So I'll sell this thing probably around $1,500. So I'm going to list it for maybe even more depending on the market. I really haven't looked at what these are priced at right now, but probably listed somewhere around 15 because of tax return season i'll probably get something close to that and uh, make a nice healthy profit on it again my total investment's around 500 bucks so even if i sold it quick for a thousand i'm still doubling my money in a matter of days so anyway that's the scoop with the malibu if there's any more to show on it i'll add it but otherwise thanks for watching and keep an eye out for the next one all right so i'm here in the copart euro benz the 300e the gray market car and I figured it'd be appropriate to be in a Copart car while I talk about what happened with the Copart Malibu. So that was just a little over a week ago. I got that car in last Friday. Look, all of Miami's biggest winners are out tonight. Uh, well, as they are every night. All the fucking losers around here, I'll tell you. So anyway, that was last Friday. Today is the following Saturday. Now I got that car and you saw when I did the previous clip to this clip right now, that was uh, last Saturday night when I had the car all cleaned up. And I put it up for sale on Sunday evening. I had a very busy weekend, I was out of town. Give me just a second here. Give you guys some light. Not that you really wanna look at my face, but if you do, for whatever weird reason, there you go. No, it's not my credit card number or something weird. That's the car wash code. Yeah, the, the economy wash. The economy wash. You know, when we buy our shitty two-hour Copar card, we ain't spending ten dollars on a car wash. We're spending three. This is like a little leak test for the Mercedes. We'll see if any water comes pouring in from all the rust holes. Shut this piece of shit off before it blows up. Okay, so let's talk about the Malibu. I'll put some lights on in here so you can see me better. So anyway, I put the car up for sale last Sunday. I actually underestimated the value of the car, but again, it is tax return season, so everything goes up a little bit. So I was in that car grand total for before, I'll tell you what happened to it. I was into it for around $600, you know, a little bit over that when you count the oil. I did an oil change on it and the junkyard battery, which was in there like 50 bucks between the oil, the filter, and the battery. So let's just say, you know, 650 is what I was into it for. Uh, put it up Sunday night for 1500 
and when I woke up in the morning, my phone was blown up. People were dying for that car. So I had like three people scheduled for Monday to see it. First person comes like two hours later, you know, in the late morning, test drives it. And we're doing the test drive. That person was immediately not interested. It was a family for the daughter for her first car. And when they saw the brakes go to the floor, they were spooked and I don't blame them. So I said, okay, you know, I took the ads down temporarily until I figured out what was going on. Looked for any leaks and uh, it's gonna get a little noisy here, sorry. Let's just let that go by. So it turns out it was the master cylinder. Uh, there was no leaks from any lines or hoses and typically if you don't see any leaks, it's your master cylinder. The uh, leak is internal on that. So not a big deal. I got the part for a little over 30 bucks and the labor was a half hour. So it was like $70 grand total for the master cylinder job and the brakes were perfect again. And I realized, you know, I might have priced the car too cheap. When you get that much action on the car right away, people aren't even negotiating, just wanting to come buy it, you know you priced yourself a little too low. Which, if you're looking to blow something out of one day, that's fine. But for me, I was in no major rush. So I, I put the ad back up with different pictures, put it up for $17.50. And, um, you know, the interest went down a little bit, but there was still interest. And I had a busy week, so I didn't really have time to show the car. But I showed it on Friday, which was a couple days ago. Actually, yesterday. I uh, showed it yesterday to a gentleman who was looking at it for his son, for his first car. He loved it, uh, test drove it, checked everything out. There was obviously nothing wrong with it. And uh, But his wife was a little spooked by the years. She wanted to come see it today with him. And um, you know, she gave it the seal of approval, they would buy it. Now he negotiated with me yesterday and I had it up for $1,750, he offered me $1,500. I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. I just wanted to at least recoup. You know, as if I had sold the car Monday for the 1500 I wanted to get around sixteen to cover my uh, master cylinder job there. So him and I, after some haggling, we agreed to 1600 if the wife approved. So he came tonight with the wife and she did approve of it. So they bought the car for the 1600 bucks. So I was in the car for, when you count the master cylinder job, like a little over 1700 I sold it for 16, excuse me, I wasn't into it for 1,700, I was into it for 700. I sold the car for 1,600, so I made just about a thousand dollar profit on it. And again, I only showed it twice, so really if, you, if only a couple of days, because again, I listed it and I took the ad down, so I got it fixed. I took my mechanic until Wednesday to get have time and do the master cylinder job, so. <laughs> a little bit louder in here than I thought it would be. Sorry if you can't hear me that well, but, um, Anyway, quick, almost $1,000 profit on that car in a matter of days, minimal effort. It was really easy to clean it up. So very happy with that deal. It goes to show you that not every car at Copart is a giant piece of shit. You just have to know what to look for. And um, that was a great example of a quick, easy, very profitable flip. So anyway, that's the scoop. Why don't we go ahead and take a look how the Mercedes looks, but the Malibu is gone and sold. And uh, on to the next one. I'll try to get more clips of like when I sell the cars and shit, but I never think of it. I don't like to get cocky either, you know what I mean? Like I didn't, I honestly thought the wife was gonna say no because she was so opposed to an older vehicle for the kid, but she ended up saying yes. So I was kind of shocked at that. Let's see how the Mercedes came out over here. Oh, that's much better than before. Anyway, I got a pizza waiting for me across the street at Papa John's. I'm gonna go pick that up. And you so thanks for watching and keep an eye out for some more Copart slash general flipping videos. You know, I'll have one up this week for sure. I got three auctions this week and I also have some uh, private sale cars on my radar. I'll give you a hint, some more BMW junk. Yeah, I know, I'm crazy. So anyway, thanks for watching and keep an eye out for the next one.